tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came forward to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. And when they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak and all who touched him were healed. So we read about constant miracles here. We read about one miracle after another. A storm stilled. Storm was stilled. Feeding of 5,000. Jesus walking on water. Peter walking on water. Incurable diseases cured. All, all incurable diseases. Everyone who came with a sickness or a disease was cured. And so I, I wanted you just to look at that a minute. But then I want to go to one part of it. How many know, know that it's an awesome thing just to read the Bible? And just to see about our miracle working God. And always be, be reminded that nothing is impossible with God. And so before I go to the main point, I want us just to pray and thank him for the word. Thank him for him, the savior of the world. The one that nothing is impossible with. That there's always a way with God. There's always yes. possibility. Amen. There's always uh, miracles for us through Christ. Amen. And we just praise you and thank you. God, and I need you right now because I don't want my words to get in the way. I want your words to go forth. And I want your power to be seen and felt that accompanies your words. And I thank you and I praise you in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, I want us to go to the part where Jesus is walking on the water. And it says it was in the fourth night, fourth watch of the night. So we know that in the evening, the boat had gone out. And after a while, as it got late, the storm came up. And we know that in a small boat, when there's a storm, there's a, a lot of water gets in the boat. And so we see the disciples were, were afraid. But when Jesus came to them, verse of 25, they were even more afraid. Because they thought it was a spirit. They thought it was a ghost. Because a human can't walk on water. People can't walk on water. So they, they were just assuming that, that this was a spirit being, a ghost. Uh, and that was a petrifying thing to them. It would be to us too. But, but Jesus says to them, take courage, it is I. Me in a human body, I'm walking on the water. Uh, he said, don't be afraid. It is I, don't be afraid. And then Peter says, Lord, if it's you... Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. And so we have to say, well, how could Jesus walk on the water? And how could Peter walk on the water? And so we know, I don't know if you've heard of the law of flotation before, but there's a law that basically says humans can't walk on the water. There's a law of flotation that, that says that when an object goes in the water, unless it displaces the amount that the object weighs or more displaces the water, it will sink. And unless it's shaped like a bowl or a boat. Uh, so we understand why boats are shaped the way they are. Because they displace enough water they move enough water away 
uh, so that the weight of the object uh, is counterbalanced by the water that's been displaced. I can't explain it. Uh, but we know that water is not as dense as a person. And a person stand, trying to walk on the water, there's a law that says you can't walk on the water. <laughs> We're not shaped like a boat, right? I'm not, at least. I don't know about you. <laughs> no. None of us are shaped like a boat. And, um, and so because we can't displace that amount of water, um, then we can't float. You might float uh, on your back, right? Or on your, but, but stand, we can't, how many try and get the point? Yeah. We can't walk on the water. There are, there are some lightweight things that can float because of the surface tension of the water. But they can't, if they're a certain weight, they can't, they can't stay just on the top. So we can't just walk and stay on the top of the water. You right, see? Yeah. There's a law that when you, to affect when God created water, uh, he created these laws. When he created the universe, he created the laws, didn't he? The this laws of physics, the laws of, how many have heard of the law of gravity? <laughs> There's a lot of natural laws um, that, that will be, they're a law. That means you, can, you don't change it. You don't change it. Unless a higher law over, supersedes it. So, so what we see here is we see a higher law. And what is the higher law that enabled both Jesus and Peter to walk on the water? Well, the higher law is that the one who made the water spoke a word. How many know God's word is law? Yeah. And when Jesus, when Peter, see, Peter believed that if Jesus spoke a command to him to come, he would be able to. Because he had full confidence in God's word. So when God, when Jesus said, come, Peter got out of the boat. And what happened? Well, he walked on water. He believed the command. He trusted in the word of God. He trusted that he could walk on water. If Jesus said for him to. Amen? So, so he gets out of the boat and he just walks on the water. Until he saw the wind and thought that there was some other power that would overrule that word. And what was the wind? He saw all of a sudden the wind stirred up again. And he's looking at the wind and he loses his faith. And so it says when he saw the wind he was afraid and began to sink. And he said, Lord, save me. So he knew that Jesus could save him. But then it says, Peter got down uh, before it. It says, when he said, Jesus, save me, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And then he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? He started out in his strong faith, but then he feared this wind would be stronger than the power that had just been given through the promise. But when Jesus said, come, he wasn't taking into consideration wind or anything else being stronger. Is there anything more powerful than the word of God? Is there any law higher than God's word? And so Jesus spoke a word that superseded or suspended the law that he, who made the law? Probably Jesus. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So we say, well, how could a person walk on water? Well, we can't unless we get a word. I've never heard of anybody walking on water before that or since that. And so we say, well, why did God, why did Jesus let Peter or command him, it was not because he needed to walk on the water. He didn't need to get somewhere. But but he faith rose up in him. When he saw Jesus walking on the way, he saw this person, and he, this man, this person says, I'm Jesus. And he said, Well, if he's Jesus and he commands me, I can walk on the water too. Yeah. 
Now, I like that. I like the faith that Peter had. I don't know about you, yeah. but I Amen. like that. Amen. If he says it, I believe it, and that settles it for me. Amen. If he says it, Amen. I believe it. Amen. And that settles it for me. Amen. Except it didn't quite settle it for Peter. Because the wind came, and he couldn't comprehend how he could still walk on the water with the waves going up and, and all of that. But when Jesus reached out for him and caught him, and they climbed, how do you climb into a boat out of the water? What do you stand on? You don't have a ladder, I don't think. So he saw, he saw his faith probably restored there. And then everyone in the boat just worshiped, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. So we have to say, why did Jesus let him walk on the water? Why? And, and I know that it was because he was giving opportunity for, for Peter's faith to grow. I mean, no, our faith has to grow. Amen. Our faith has to. And all the things we read here were, were to help these disciples' faith grow. Amen. All these miracles. To help all the people's faith. Amen. That he can do anything. Amen. That all things are possible right. through him. But, but we have to understand also who Peter was. That Peter was the one that was going to bring the gospel to the Jews. That he was the apostle that was commissioned. Jesus, how do you know? He said to Peter, after he was resurrected, Peter, feed my sheep. Over and over and over and over. And he said, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Over and over and over, he let it be known that Peter was the one who was going to lead at the very beginning of establishing the church. He was going to lead in this building of God's kingdom on earth after Jesus resurrected. And so I want, I want us to understand that, that walking on the water has a spiritual significance. That what the gospel, what Jesus enables us to do as humans is do something that we cannot do. That there's a law that keeps us from doing this. There's a law that keeps us from living the life that he died to give us. There's a law in effect that, that says that you can't do right. That no one is righteous. That no one is good. No one is able to do right. So there's a law, and it's called the law of sin and death. And I want us to go, I want us to go to Romans chapter 7. We know that on the day of Pentecost, that Peter preached the first sermon. And in that time, at that time, the Jewish people that were there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, gathered because of the sounds of the Holy Spirit coming and shaking this place where the disciples were staying. And through the Holy Spirit, Peter preached this word that helped all of these people that had either been a part of crucifying Jesus or had just refused Jesus when he came to earth. And, and they, through the sermon, they knew that they could not do right, that there was wickedness in their hearts, that they could not serve God as they think they are because there's something missing inside. And when he preached to them, he said, repent. On the day of Pentecost, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the Holy Spirit. And he's talking about a spiritual walking on water that God does through Christ when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, I want you, how many going to help me? They say she needs some help. Amen. She needs some amens back here. Amen. 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 Amen, because I've got to be walking on some water as I speak today. Amen. Amen. I've got to have his help. Amen. I've got to believe in his promises. And, and so what, what we learn from this in Romans 7 is, is that there's a law in effect. And I want to liken it to the law of flotation. But the law of flotation says that humans can't walk on water. Humans cannot walk on water. 
there's a law, there's a power, there's a principle that it is impossible unless a higher law takes effect. 